Hey, it's Casey here. Uh, I just wanted to show off a project I've been working on um, just a little bit here and there when I had time. Um, one of my friends actually had a RC tank and it didn't work and he'd sold them. Um, there's two of them. I got this is one of the ones that he put metal tracks on. So these are nice solid metal tracks on here. Um, one of my friends helped me pull out a link on these. And we got these reassembled and he went through and did all the mechanical work on this to make sure it's dialed in. Um, it does have a suspension on it. I can't remember the brand off the top of my head, but I'll put it in the comments when I, when I get a chance to look that up. Uh, so the control system didn't work at all. And what I did was I got a... Um, found this controller called uh, Thunderborg. It's from... Uh, it's from uh, Pyborg.com. See if I can get this to focus in on it. Yeah, so it's the Thunderbird, Thunderborg 5 amp controller. Um, it comes with this, like one of the models it comes with, uh, this little 9 volt style connector on it if you get the upgraded one. Uh, if I was to do it again, I don't know if I would, would, would have gotten this, but it does have a secondary LED on the bottom, so I might be able to want to get all this mounted nice and clean I'll get that uh, where that shines through on the bottom um, I had a Raspberry Pi 3 on here initially for the setup but I went in and uh, I uh, decided to go with the, the Pi Zero um, so it came I had to solder the the pin header on here which I think I'm going to unsolder it and then turn it over so that the um, so all these pins are on top instead. Um, there's a little block that it plugs in. Plugs in right there off of the, not there, not there, but the, it's right next to it. There's a block on the board. I don't think we can see it. Um, which unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that to come into view. Um, but the, uh, so yeah, that pin header is right underneath there. You might be able to go to the uh, pieborg.com and look this up and see that header that sits on there. But uh, the, this plugs in real nice. It comes with the standoffs. Um, so uh, you just mount, mount it in the standoffs. A Raspberry Pi 3 is what I had on here, which stuck out a bunch on here, but it had all the USB interfaces and all that. Um, so um, essentially what this, how this works, the way I've got it set up is on their site they actually have some instructions on how to set up a PlayStation 3 controller which I would say that the instructions are are solid um, I've noticed uh, there's some bugs like the new version of Raspbian stretch has issues um, just random issues and some things just work and then other stuff just you have to mess with it to get it work so what I did is I went back and I installed Jesse on this. Uh, well, I, I actually I, this is my same SD card from my Raspberry Pi 3. So when I got this is the uh, Pi Zero W with wireless on it. So this has wireless um, wireless Bluetooth, and I think the different other big differences is this is a single core processor instead of a, a multi quad core processor. But um, all said and done, it works really good. Um, I will let's see here. Um, I, I'm gonna redo this here because I just put this on the temporarily test. Um, one of the cool features about this controller is you can set the input voltage and then you can set the output voltage. So you can tell it like there's a battery config tool that the LED light will change colors depending on on what um, what your battery level is so when you start to get so it'll start at green it'll start to fade into yellow and then yellow into red or it'll also tell you if you're um, in the actual code it'll tell you it, to turn this blue if the controller is not connected or or whatnot so um, I will uh, we'll get this connected up here let's see here if I can do this one handed I want to attempt this so I got a four cell battery, uh, 4S 2500. Um, 
honestly, I think this battery is way too big, like capacity wise, because I've ran for, I'm getting about two to three hours of run time on that, so, um, it's hard to do one handed. I just got the cardboard in here right now so I can mock it up and test everything. So, we're powering up now. And then you can see over here the green flashings, the the pie booting up. And then what it'll do is it'll go from green to blue when it's completely booted up. And then uh, the program starts that actually runs the tank. So it takes just a second for the OS to do its thing. I've also got, um, while this is going, I got the video um, video conferencing software I found for uh, ras the Raspberry, well, it's for Linux, but it works really well on this situation because it's uh, low latency. So um, I have this camera I got that's got a, let's see if I can get it here. So I, I've got infrared on it. So these are the infrared bulbs, and then there's photo sensors next to it, so it doesn't turn on the infrared unless the light's low enough. And then here's the actual camera, and it's a 1080p by 60 frames per second is what that maxes out at. But uh, so as you can see right now, the lights turn blue, so everything once it turns blue in this scenario or the way I got it set up, we just go to the PlayStation control, and you'll see it do that, and then you'll see it sync up. And then the lights changed. To, now it's green, and that's telling me the battery level. And then it's just it's some as simple as uh, just so I'm just pushing forwards on the stick. And it works well. Um, I'll shoot some video of it driving around here in a second, and then I'll and then I'll. Uh, hit. If anybody has any questions after that, just let me know. Leave them in the comments. Okay, so I've got the tank uh, ready to run. Um, uh, PlayStation control, you can see, like I just, I'll just push forward, backwards. And if I push right and forwards, it does a one track turn. Left and forward, same thing. If I pull the trigger here, so I, and then turn right, so I'll do an in-place turn. Same thing left. And then I have it set to, if I pull this trigger here, the on the PlayStation controller, what that'll do is it'll adjust the speed. So I um, it, it makes it go faster when I pull that trigger. So originally it was set in the scripts that they give you the example scripts is they have the um, when you pull the trigger that it actually slows down the tank and I want it to actually do the opposite I want it to drive slow all the time and then speed up if I need it so basically if I need to goose it to get over some an object or something so um, so if I drive it Now I'm going to drive it and then pull the trigger halfway through. So, right here. so I'm going to drive it and pull the trigger. Else it runs slow like this when I'm off the trigger. So. It's, it makes it pretty nice, but again, the goal the goal of this whole thing is to actually make it um, pull cable over ceiling tiles is what I'm going to use this for. So now that I've got it mocked up, everything's working. Uh, the camera will give me first person video with infrared on it, so it's actually pretty pretty cool. I'm digging it. And one other thing we did, um, and when I say we, my brother helped me come up with the code or the instructions on in the code to actually um, I didn't want to have to remote into this thing to properly shut it down each time so what we did is we created created a function that basically if I pull three buttons on it it actually shuts down the uh, the tank now so so what I'll do is I'll pull these top two triggers and then push the actual PlayStation button 
and you see it do that, it means it's shutting down. It actually means that it's a communication error with the board, but that means that the program stopped and it's actually shutting down. And then the actual green button will go off, or the green light will go off on the Raspberry Pi when it's completely off. And at that point, it's safe to unplug it. So, anyways, I just wanted to share how far I got so far, and I'm getting ready to get it finished up. So, I'm excited. All right, well, I'm at my driveway here. I'm going to see how far I can get before it dies. Theoretically, the controller will just disconnect. And then it should go blue at that point. My driveway here is 300 feet and I'm probably at 75 now maybe. Probably a hundred. Hundred and fifty, maybe. Dude, I'm all the way. Oh, it just drove out. So, all right, I actually was able to recover it. I will say driving a tank is a challenge from a distance when you can't see the direction it's going. I'm over controlling it. I'm coming back slower now. <clears throat> All right, now I'm so I probably got a good 200 feet before it crapped itself. And that's pretty impressive just on a PlayStation controller, so. I'm digging it. So, next thing to do is get the board mounted up. Um, I'm running it on a 4-cell, but I actually have the voltage step down to 9.6 volts. So, um, any higher than that, I was actually throwing the tracks off of it. So, I'm really impressed how well this is working. This should not work this well. So, green means that it's still at full voltage. That we haven't really dropped any. And the goal of this thing is to actually pull wire over ceiling tiles is what I'm looking to do with it. So, all right. I'm going to check some stuff now. Motors, lukewarm. Battery, not even warm. Uh, we started at 16.6. We're at 16.3 now, so 3 tenths off of the battery. So, not bad, man. I'm really digging it. 
I will tell you when I had it up at the higher voltage and I stepped on it, man, it was fast, but it, it was just going to cause issues. But all right, well, that's all I got. Just wanted to share. Um, I'll show more when I get it further.